I exult for joy in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me in a garment of salvation and robed me in the cloak of justice. Our mass intentions this morning in thanksgiving for the graces received through the intercession of Our Lady for the needs of Holy Mother Church and the suffering world, for Julie Sylvester on her birthday, for all those recommended to our prayers, for the deceased parents, for the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners, and for the reign of God's kingdom on earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we come together this morning to give thanks to God and to our Mother Mary for the gift of friendship, the gift of love, we come to ask God for healing who heals us every day. Sometimes physical illnesses, most of the times spiritual illnesses. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord God, you willed that the order of Camel should be named in, her, in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, mother of your son. Through her prayers as we honor her today, Bring us to everlasting joy in her company. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, and he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men stood in front of him. 
When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the earth and said, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourself under the tree. While I'll fetch a morsel of bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent of Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a cup, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the cup which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. And the Lord said, I will return, I will surely return to you in the spring, and Sarah your wife shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old advanced in age, it has ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old, and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? So the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you in the spring, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not love, for she was afraid. He said, No, but you did love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has remembered his mercy. The Lord has remembered his mercy. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. The Lord has, has remembered, remembered his, his mercy. mercy. For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. Unholy is his name. The Lord has remembered his mercy. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. The Lord has remembered his mercy. He has helped his servant Israel and in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his posterity forever. The Lord has remembered his mercy. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ took our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Old Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. At that time, Jesus entered Capernaum. A centurion came forward to him, begging him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion answered him, Lord, 
I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard him, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, men will come from east and west and sit at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. There men will weep and gnash their teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. And when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her, her hand, and the fever left her, and she rose and saved him. That evening, they brought to him many who were possessed with demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. The Gospel of the Lord. So the gospel which we have read today, if we read it in another version, the gospel of Mark has got different endings. In the gospel of Mark, after healing, Jesus goes away and he goes to pray. And then when they went to look for him, to say, people are waiting for you, they are looking for you. Then he said to them, look, Let's go to some other cities. I have to proclaim the good news there. Perhaps we can look at healing and how we experience healing and what we need when we ask for healing. Now, as we know, we have different kinds of sicknesses. Some of them, we see them. We see people who are sick physically, lying on their beds, in the hospitals, at home, and we most of the times marvel and say, these are sick indeed. Then, there is another kind of sickness. the sickness that we cannot see, the spiritual sickness. There is another kind which manifests itself in the actions that people do, the psychological sickness, which uh, most of the times when we go in the streets, we might see people picking up in the dustbins and and they have not combed their hair, and they have not dressed properly, then we say, these are sick. But even in families, we have sicknesses. If a family, a couple, do not have the fruit of the, their marriage, they, they become sick, most of them. They, are, they get worried. And during those days, we, we read the stories of uh, 
Abraham today and the story of Elizabeth, who is the story of Anna, who were complaining for being in, for not having that, that the child. It is another kind of a sickness. But in all these, what we need is healing. And the healing that we need is driven by the faith that we have. If you have the physical sickness, most of the times, as we know, we go to the hospital. We have hope, we have faith to say, if the doctor gives me this medication, I will be healed. Those who have got the psychological sicknesses, we take them to different people, sometimes to the psychiatrist, sometimes to the psychologist, seeking different, all these healings. And those sometimes who have got physical sicknesses, we also take them to those who pray for healing, miracles. And this is a bit dangerous because sometimes when it doesn't happen that people are praying that, oh, this person should be healed, and then the person is not healed, they, it, it can lead to losing faith. And we say, oh, no, we just wasted our, our time. But the greatest healing that we receive, whether we have the physical condition, the psychological condition, or whatever condition we might think of, is that of the heart. Being healed in the heart. Being healed spiritually. Feeling at peace even in the moments of great difficulties. I'll give you an example of the young lady, young Camelite nun, St. Teresa of Lisieux, who suffered all her life, feeling great pain with chronic disease. And when you read her memoir, she would say, at the moment when I failed great pain, she, she, she would even wish that she's not in this world. She turned to our mother Mary and said, give me the comfort that I need. And she says, the moment I turned to our lady, I would feel that pain gone and I'll feel at peace. Such great healing in our, in our hearts. That healing might not take away the, the physical experience, but it will bring that serenity within us. To do this, we need to do what the centurion has done today, who was a Roman, who only knew about Jesus in a different way, but he comes to realize that, you see, these people, they, are, they cannot heal my servant, but there is one person who can heal in this servant of mine. And this is our Lord Jesus. And when he goes, Jesus offers to go to his house and he says, no, 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 I know who you are. You don't need to come to my house. All you need is to say, the word. And this is a great faith which we say every day. Even now you'll be saying it. We will be saying it. All of us. The whole church will be saying, has been saying this, these, these, these words. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my, my roof. It used to be, it used to be, I'm not worthy that you should come into my heart. Now they have changed it. They, they have going back to the, probably it is the original saying, I, I don't know. But we say it every day. The question is, do we say it with conviction, with that deep sense of faith, to say, the Lord is going to heal me. When I receive the blessed sacrament, the Lord is going to heal me. When I receive the blessed sacrament, the Lord is coming into my heart. When I receive the Eucharist, 
Jesus is coming to stay under my roof, even though I am not worthy. This is the greatest healing, the healing that comes with our faith. So let us pray this morning, my dear friends, that as we come to worship God, as we come to thank him for the gift of life, those of you who are celebrating the birthdays, as we come to thank God for those of you who have lost relatives, may we have that faith which is immovable in God, believing that in every situation God is there coming to us, healing us, granting us whatever we need. And may we respond like Simon Peter's mother in law, who after being healed, she continues serving the Lord. May we also go and serve the Lord. May God bless us all. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name. Lord God, we reverently offer you these gifts in memory of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. In your service, may our love become like hers and so unite us more closely with the work of redemption. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless and glorify your name as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Carmel. Your word filled her heart and inspired all her actions, making her constant in prayer with the apostles and through her share in our salvation, constituting her the spiritual mother of all humankind. She watches unceasingly with the mother's loving care over the brethren of her son and lights us along our pilgrim way to the mount of your glory, our beacon of comfort and the embodiment of all our hopes as members of the church. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen Breslin, our Bishop, and Sylvester, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember, 
also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coheres to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. Amen. 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 The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Communion Antiphon. All generations will call me blessed because God has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Let us pray. Lord, you have strengthened us with food from heaven. May the remembrance of Our Lady of Mount Carmel always bring us happiness and peace in the knowledge of her protection and help us to become what you want us to be. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. It is the birthday. Where is this one?
Julie Sylvester, is she here? She's not here. Okay. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharistic celebration has come to an end. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.